Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'd like to welcome all of you worshiping here this morning. It's good to see your face, your shining face this morning as we worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who gives us our salvation that we may work and serve him in his kingdom. Uh, just a few announcements. Actually, there's more than a few. There's actually a number of announcements this morning. First of all, if you have not done so already, please pull out the communication card that is in front of you in the pew, and please sign your name and put it beside you in the pew so it'll be picked up later on after worship. And that would be greatly, greatly appreciated. Second of all, uh, just to let you know, uh, Sunday School and Bible Class will pick up and resume again next Sunday at 9 a.m. Uh, Bible Class is starting a brand new uh, theme, a brand new study entitled That Blank Page in the Middle. If you'd like to know more about that, well, be there at 9 o'clock next Sunday in the gym. And we'll talk and we'll you'll learn more about what's going on at that bank blank page in the middle. Okay, just to let you know that. Uh, tomorrow morning, pancake breakfast for the preschool starts at 7.45 a.m. and goes until 8.30 a.m. Come and support our preschool and also enjoy some pancakes and fellowship with the people in our community as well. Uh, adult volleyball is next Monday at 6.30. I know some of you are looking forward to that. Um, that'll be at 6.30 next Monday. And then also this coming Wednesday, before that even ha happens, this Wednesday is Wednesday morning Bible study. We are starting and we're continuing the study of the book of Revelation, and that is at 10 o'clock in the glass room here at the church at Wednesday morning. A choir and handbell choir are looking for volunteers. If you'd like to ring bells or if you'd like to sing, uh, they would love to have you uh, ring bells or sing. Uh, just, just look up. Uh, just look up Pam, and she'll get you hooked up with the handbells. And for choir, is that Barbara still? Not, who, 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 who do I get in contact for choir? Barbara? Barbara. Barbara Havman? Okay. So if you want to sing, get in touch with Barbara. If you want to ring bells, go ahead and get in touch with Pam. Um, first confirmation seminar is this coming Wednesday. Uh, I don't know about the kids in confirm confirmation, but I am looking forward to this. Confirmation starts this Wednesday at 5.30, 5.30 to 8 o'clock. So please, for confirmation kids, 6th grade and 7th grade, uh, looking forward to this. Church Council meets tomorrow at 6.30 p.m., and that'll be in the conference room upstairs where the elders will meet today, immediately following the worship service this morning. With this being said, we begin our worship with the prelude.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is my portion. I promise to keep your words. I entreat your favor with all my heart. Be gracious to me according to your promise. When I think on my ways, I turn my feet to your testimonies. I hasten and do not delay to your commandments. I am a companion of all who fear you of those who keep your precepts. The earth, O Lord, is full of your steadfast love. Teach me your statutes. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. Gracious God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We are by nature sinful and a people of your pasture, and she daily we do things we ought not do, and do not live up to our calling as the people of your pasture and the sheep of your hand. We justly deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is in the merits of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant us remission of all our sins and lead us to renewed lives that reflect your goodness and love. God is gracious and merciful. He hears our supplications and joyfully restores us to his fold. By the command of our Lord and as his called ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, without whom nothing is secure. Rescue and preserve us, that we may not be lost forever, but follow you, rejoice in the way that leads to eternal life. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. shepherd lead us 
The Old Testament reading for today is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 34, beginning with verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all of the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek and I will seek the weak and the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pastures and to drink of clear water that you must muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat what you have trodden on with your feet and drink what you have muddled with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself, will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you push with side and shoulder, 
and thrust at all the wheat with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep, and I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord, I have spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading for today is from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 12, beginning at verse 12. I thank him who has given me strength, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithful, appointing me to his service. Though formerly I was a blasphemer, persecutor, and insolent opponent, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us rise and read the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear him. And the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he has found it, he calls together his friends. 
friends and his neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over ninety-nine righteous persons who need no repentance. Or what woman, having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp and sweep the house and seek diligently until she finds it? And when she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors and says, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy before the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. God has made us his people through our baptism to Christ Jesus. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time I'd like to invite all the children up for a special message for them. Come up from the front of the church, and we'll have a nice message for you. Come on up. Come on up. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? Hey, Addie, sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Kinsley, you found my keys. I threw him over there, didn't I? Well, I was supposed to drop him behind you, but I forgot to drop him behind you, okay? Have you ever lost something? Yes? Let me just tell you, many years ago, many years ago I lost my keys to my pickup truck. Yeah, it's bad. I had two sets, and I lost one of them. You know what? I never found that key. That makes me upset. To this day, I have never found, have you ever, have you found my key yet? You found it? It's going to be kind of hard for you to find it because it's six hours from here. It's a six hour drive from here, Addy. Can you find it? I, I honestly, to this, to this day, I have no idea where that key is. It, it was a red keychain. It was a red plastic keychain and it had one key on it. It, looks just like, it looked just like that. But the keychain was actually red, and I lost it. And for this day, I'm still upset about it. It still makes me mad. I still wonder, where is that key? You know what? I will probably never find it. And I'm still going to be always upset that I never found it. You know what? That's also bad. I got rid of that pickup last century. <laughs> Before you were born, I got rid of that pickup. It's how long it's been, okay? But I'm still... I'm still upset about that. I lost that key. Okay? Well, this morning I tried to lose this key, but you found it for me. You know what, though? I'm happy you found it. Because what happens when you lose something and you never find it again? It's quite upsetting. It's really sad, isn't it? But if you lose something and you find it or someone else finds it for you, what do you do? Especially, I'm sorry, Kinsley. Especially if you've been looking for it for a long, long time. What do you do? What, what? You say thank you. So thank you for finding my key this morning, okay? And you also rejoice, don't you? You're happy that you found a key or you found what you lost. Whether it be money, whether it be a paper, whether it be a homework assignment, or whether that be a toy, or whether it be 
whatever it may be. You're what, your dog? Yeah, if you lose your dog and you find your dog, that's, you'd be happy when you find your dog, right? But what happened? Or a cat, if you lost your cat and you find your cat, you're happy, you're rejoicing, right? And it's, it's exciting to have something that's been lost to be found. And it's so exciting and so we rejoice and we have so happy that we have now something we have found that we thought was gone. Do you know how God feels about you? How, how does God feel about me? How does God feel about everybody who repents of their sin and turns to Him? How does God feel? Well, He's sad that we're not... He's sad that when we don't repent, right? But he's happy. He rejoices when we repent and we turn to him for forgiveness. Because you know what? We're found. And that one day we will be in heaven with God and with Jesus and with the Spirit. And we will have rejoicing forever and ever and ever. So finding things is a good thing, right? Especially when God finds us. That many times we get lost. God finds us and he rejoices. Have you ever thought about that? That God actually rejoices about you. Think about that. You are special in God's eyes, and God actually rejoices because of you. Because he found you in Jesus, his son, who died upon the cross, takes away your sins, and grants you everlasting life. God is happy with you. God rejoices because he died for your sins and gives you everlasting life. You are so special to him. You are so great to him that he rejoices and he's greatly, greatly happy because of that. Hey, let's all fold our hands and let's pray. Repeat after me, please. Dear God, we give you thanks that you have found us in your Son, Jesus. Help us to always rejoice in you. In Jesus' name, we pray. And if you'd like to pick one thing out of the treasure chest, you may do so.
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The basis of our meditation this morning comes to us from the Gospel, Luke chapter 15. We listen again to the first two verses. Now all the tax collectors and the sinners were drawing near to hear him. And both the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, He receives sinners and eats with them. Dear brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. There was a huge commotion at the little brown church in the country. They had called an emergency elders meeting because one of them had spotted their pastor's car outside the local bar. In that meeting, they met together. One of them started the meeting out by saying, how can you do this to us? To be found at a local establishment that is known for crime, for drugs, for alcohol, for dancing, and who knows what else goes on in that establishment. He has now made a black eye of our congregation because he is our leader being there. During that meeting, the situation, no facts were said, only pastor bashing about how bad he is at this or bad he is at that. One man in that elders meeting stood up and he said, you know, we are Christian brothers here and our pastor must have a say in what's happening here. He must be held accountable, so let him be at this meeting. So they held another meeting the following Sunday. The only thing, though, is all the elders were thinking about what was going to take place in this meeting until a couple, a new couple, a guest, walked in the doors of the church. And everybody turned and looked because out in this country, in this church, they had very few visitors, very few guests show up. And everybody wanted to know exactly who they were that came to the door. And one of them was the head elder. He came walking up to them and introduced himself and said, I'm the head elder here. Can I help you? And please come and be a guest here. And he found out the reason why this couple came to church was because every Saturday night at the local bar, their pastor was counseling them. They found out that the pastor was there not because of the establishment. He was there because of this couple who had asked him to help them with their situation. It sounds very familiar, doesn't it? The story that we hear in Luke chapter 15. Jesus has and draws a crowd. And among that crowd, he draws in sinners, and worse than even that, tax collectors. Tax collectors, those are the people who collected the taxes for the Roman government. Those were the people who, people of Israel, hated. They despised them. These are the ones who were traitors to the Israelite people and serving the Romans and also serving themselves with greed. But the tax collectors and the sinners were drawing near to Jesus to listen to him. Then we get the judgment. The Pharisees and the scribes, both together, grumbled. And notice what they say. This man receives sinners and eats with them. The tax collectors and the sinners were there to listen to Jesus. But notice, really, there was no eating involved in this situation. Of course, this is, a, this is actually a, cus a, a customary thing for people to eat together. It was very, very important and a very issue that only close, close friends and relatives would eat together. And they are saying that Jesus is eating with tax collectors and sinners is actually far from the truth. They were not saying anything that was factual. They were passing judgment upon Jesus. Because if the truth be known, Jesus actually didn't have them come he welcomes them, yes, but he didn't go out of his way and say, come. 
No, they followed him because they knew exactly who Jesus was. He was a man who has given them hope. Hope in a time where they needed hope. A desperate time for the people of Israel because they were under the Roman authority. They were under oppression. And yet they also understood their oppression of sin as well. So how do we deal with other people around us? Oftentimes our mindset is very much, I hate to say it, but like the Pharisees and the scribes. We love to pass judgment on other people, on the silliest things, and even on more important things. Well, look what Mr. Jones is wearing to church this morning. I wouldn't be caught dead in that. What does he think he is? Who do you think he, what do you, who do you think he is? And where do you think he's going with wearing something like that? Or the person who passes judgment on others is oftentimes you and me. That's our mindset. Even as Christian brothers and sisters, we don't see our own sin, but we want to point out other people's sins to other people. Yes, we're very judgmental this way. Maybe we make ourselves feel better by doing this. Maybe we elevate ourselves above other people by pointing other people's sins out. But reality has it. We don't do either of those. Instead, we find ourselves in a mindset that is completely lost. And Jesus wants to point that out to us this morning. When we have a mindset of judgmental mentality towards others, we are living in sin. The sin is wrapped around us. The sin of judgment is all around us many times in our lives. And we put, I want to point that out to others as if I'm better than somebody else because I don't do those kind of things. Or I don't say those kind of things. Or I don't look that way. We many times are like the Pharisees and the scribes. Judging others in a wrong way way. The Romans oftentimes had interesting punishment for their criminals. And one interesting punishment resembles what you and I oftentimes go through in life with our judgmentality towards others. One way they punished their, their criminals was this. They would take a dead corpse and bind the live prisoner to that corpse where they would have to endure the stench and the deadness always being by them. What a horrific punishment. Think about that. Whatever you do, whatever you said, wherever you went, you would have a dead person attached to you at all times. And eventually that person would erode and decay with that dead body. That's a horrific punishment. And the sad thing is that you and I do it to ourselves. No, we may not have a dead body actually attached to us, but we have our dead, sinful self always there with us, always judging others, which in said, instead judges us. We judge others. And don't repent of our sins. That's exactly what we're doing to ourselves spiritually. When we don't see our sin, we don't see the grace of God. And that, my brothers and sisters in Christ, is what we are all about, is the grace of God. Notice the parables that Jesus talks about this morning. He talks about two things, actually three things later on, that were not part of our reading. First, the man who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. He goes out and searches for that one sheep, and when he finds it, he puts it on his shoulders, and what does he do? But he rejoices. The woman, losing one coin, lights a lamp in her house and sweeps it, searches diligently for it, and when she finds it, she rejoices. And not just rejoices, she calls her neighbors and her friends, and she says, celebrate with me for what I have lost has now been found. 
my brothers and sisters in Christ, our judgmentality, our mindset has now had a makeover through his son Jesus, who takes away, takes away our wanting to judge others because he judges us as guilty, as charged. But our guilt is put upon the son Jesus. Our sin of judging others has been put upon him, and he has been judged to death upon a cross where he dies and suffers to take away our sin as a sacrifice for us to God. And it is death and resurrection. God no longer sees us as people who are judgmental towards others. Instead, he grants us forgiveness and gives us the ability to see others as who they truly are, as sinful people but yet have been forgiven in the blood of Jesus, as you and I also are forgiven in the blood of Jesus. For we then also rejoice. For the third story that Jesus tells about concerning this is the parable of the forgiving father, otherwise known as the prodigal son, later on in chapter 15 of Luke. And notice what happens there. Once again, there is rejoicing. When was the last time you thought about this to yourself, that God actually rejoices over you? Because that's exactly what God does through his son Jesus. He rejoices because you who once were lost in our mindset of judging others, God has granted us his forgiveness that we should repent of our sin and turn to him for his forgiveness, his love, and his undeserved love, which is called grace. I heard a story once that happened in 1981. It's been a long time back. But 1981, a radio station in Minnesota published this story. Apparently what had taken place is a man's Volkswagen Beetle, his car got stolen. And he went to the police to report this. But yet, in his reporting, he wasn't so concerned about his car so as much as the box of crackers that sat in the front seat with him. You see, that box of crackers was actually laced with poison, and he did not want the thief to eat any of his crackers because he used those crackers for rat bait. And if the man would eat any of those crackers, he would die. And so radio stations throughout the entire country put out this bulletin saying, if you have stolen a, a Volkswagen Beetle, do not eat the crackers in the front seat. Isn't that similar to how God does with us as well? He gives us his commandments. He calls us as his people. He does not condemn us to death because of his son Jesus. But he wants to call us to faith, not to condemn us, but he calls us to faith so that we can have life and not die in our mentality of judging others because he has judged his son for us who dies for us and grants us everlasting life. My brothers and sisters in Christ, as we go through in life, may we always look at each other not in eyes of judgment, not with a mindset of judging somebody, but looking at them as who they truly are. Someone who we also are. Someone who was lost. And now who was found. By the blood, the suffering, and the death of Jesus on the cross. And in his empty tomb has been granted life. In Jesus' name.
let us rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church. Help your people to live confidently and joyfully so that they may share the message of salvation in word and in deed. We pray for the nations of the world that the presence of Christ be experienced everywhere around the globe and that the gospel have free course in every land. And let us pray for the gift of peace in the world and in our communities. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our we pray for our families, for those who share our Christian fellowship and join with us in worship. Grant that we may never take for granted, but rather we encourage all to share joyfully in our work together to the glory of God. Lord, in your mercy, grant your healing presence to be upon those suffering and struggling with cancer. Be with Brenda, Carolyn, and Lisa as they suffer from non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Stephanie, Kathleen, and Patsy with lung cancer. Robert, Kelly, Dylan, and Lindley Joe with brain cancer. Be also with Darlene, Bridget, Shirley, and Trish with breast cancer. Bless also Bennett with leukemia, Daniel with bladder cancer, Sherry with bone cancer, Kenneth and Matt with liver cancer, and also Alan with pancreatic cancer. We also pray for your comfort, for your encouragement, and also for your healing to be upon Carol, Doyle, Elrose, Eva, Mac, Kim, David, Sylvia, Cindy, and Nell. Bless them with your comfort and with your love. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for those who are unable to be with us this morning in worship, especially our shut-ins, Dorothy, Shirley, Joyce, George, and Carrie. Lord, in your mercy, grant healing and encouragement and comfort of those with health concerns, Donna and Sabrina for upcoming surgeries, Susie, Hilda, and Lisa as they recover from surgery. Also bless with strength, Dolores and Jim, as they recover from COVID. Give strength and healing also to Sandra, David, Greg, Barbara, and Cynthia. Continue to bless Jennifer as she continues to recover from a stroke. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would also give strength and healing to Lorraine, Geraldine, Kate, Ruby, Ophelia, Vernell, Bob, Paulette, Sarah, Ashley, Ron, David Lee, Justin, and Kimbra. Lord, in your mercy, God of the universe, we pray for you to give protection and courage to those of our military, especially Zach and Kyle. Protect them as they protect us. Lord, in your mercy, God of the ages, we thank you for all those faithful people whose words and actions have guided us in the past especially remembering those no longer with us on earth, who now share in your eternal presence. By the working of your Holy Spirit, direct us to follow the leading of Jesus, our great shepherd, throughout our lives until the day when he stand in your glorious kingdom. Amen. Taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You may be seated. 